Eric Thames used to be a top 10 hitter in baseball. In 2017, he was taking over the league as he was smashing the baseball. He was hitting so well that in April, he hit 11 home runs with a 345 batting average, which is insane. So if Thames was playing this well in 2017, why is it that he is now forgotten, hasn't been in the league for years, and just recently announced his retirement from baseball? How did Thames go from a potential star to a nobody? Well, let's find out. Eric Thames was raised in the San Jose to Santa Clara area. In high school, he played shortstop and was a third string on his team, but that was in his freshman year. As a sophomore, he became the starting shortstop. He was an all-league player for two years and was even a team MVP as a senior on the team. Thames would attend Pepperdine University. And let's just say, he was a great ball player who had a ton of talent in store. He lasted two years in college, and in his second year, he had a 407 batting average with 13 home runs and 59 RBIs. He did this in just 49 games, which is insane. While Thames played well in college, scouts didn't really notice him. He was never talked about a lot and wasn't really in the discussion of being the next big thing. Thames was drafted in the 7th round of the 2008 MLB Draft by the Toronto Blue Jays. As for a scouting report, it was mentioned by Baseball America how muscular he is, coming in at 6 feet and 205 pounds. Thames' main skill was obviously the fact that he had an active bat and typically hit the ball better when he cut down his swing. He was not great at off-speed pitches and he typically swung over them. The scouts also mentioned how his defense was mediocre. He was better off being a left fielder as he had an inconsistent arm but it had acceptable speed and range. So now let's take a look at his MLB career and where it started. Thames wouldn't get called up to the big leagues until 2021. He'd get called up after destroying AAA with a 342 batting average and 6 home runs. Thames played in 95 games back in 2011 and did pretty well. He put up a 262 batting average with 12 home runs and 37 RBIs. He also had an OPS of 769, which is average. But for your rookie season, that is not bad. 2012 would come around and this would be his final season in the major leagues for a while. He started off by playing average baseball with the Blue Jays, then would get traded to the Seattle Mariners on trade deadline. In Seattle, he underperformed as his batting average went down to 220. After 2012, he bounced around and was in Houston and Baltimore's minor league teams, but he never played in the majors that season. And after 2013, he would go play in the Venezuelan Winter League where he would get noticed by the NC Dino Scouts, a team who plays in the KBO. He would then get released by Houston to go play in the KBO. And let's just say, the KBO saved his Major League Baseball career. He played in the KBO for four years, but those four years were well worth it to return to Major League Baseball. When Thames played in the KBO, he turned into a superstar. In 2014, he had a 343 batting average with 37 home runs and 121 RBIs. His on-base percentage was at 1,111. He was literally playing like Barry Bonds out there. But wait, it gets better. The very next season, he was in the 40-40 club, meaning he had over 40 home runs and stole over 40 bases. Only four players have done this in Major League Baseball. The fact Thames did this is unreal, and it doesn't matter that it wasn't in the MLB. No matter what league this is in, you're doing something sensational. He would obviously win KBO MVP, and as well as a Gold Glove, he was an all-around player that season. Then in 2016, he had another historical season with 40 home runs and 121 RBIs. By playing this well, you better believe MLB teams were interested in him, the Milwaukee Brewers being one of them. He would sign with Milwaukee for 3 years $16 million. 2017 would be his first season on the team, and let's just say he would get straight to work. He started the season going off. He had a 345 batting average with 11 home runs and 19 RBIs back in April. He did this in 84 at-bats, that is video game numbers. He looked like the best hitter in baseball that month. He was playing so well that other MLB teams thought he was cheating. The Chicago Cubs implied that Eric Thames was on roids as he seemed a little suspicious, but he denied it and eventually people moved on from the rumors. Thames finished the season with a 247 batting average and 31 home runs with 63 RBIs. While the average is a little low, this is still an all-star caliber season, right? Well, what if I told you Thames did not make the all-star with these stats? 
And while he looked amazing in April, that was the only month he really did anything all-star tier. If you look at his splits in 2017, after that month, his stats regressed and he was more of an average player. His average dropped like crazy. He was hitting homers every month, but the second half was completely different from the first. He hit 22 home runs in the first half and eight in the second. He went from a stud to an average Joe. And let's just say he was never the same player after April. In 2018, his average was down to 218. Plus, he only played in 96 games as he tore his UCL on his left thumb. His 2018 season was quite forgetful as he didn't do anything worth discussing. He kind of picked up the pace in 2019 as he finished the season with 25 home runs. And the average was at a respectable 247. But 2019 would be Thames' final season in Milwaukee. In the offseason, he signed with the Washington Nationals, which might have been another reason for his downfall. In 2020, he played in 41 of the 60 games and was not great. He had a 203 batting average with 3 home runs and 12 RBIs, which is quite bad. People believe the only reason Thames played that season was because Ryan Zimmerman opted out, which makes you think how unvaluable Thames had become. 2020 would be his last season in the majors. He would play for the Yomiuri Giants in 2021, but was cut from the team in August. In 2022, he returned to the MLB as he signed with the Oakland A's. He played for their AAA team and was cut a few months after signing. After months of not receiving any interest from major league teams, let alone baseball teams, Thames announced on February 15th he would be hanging up his cleats at 36 years old. So let me ask the question once more. What happened to Eric Thames? He went from being a talented baseball player to now being a forgotten player and his career never went down the path many believed it would go through. Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It is hard to determine what exactly happened to him. Typically, it would be because of an injury or some kind of event that throws a player off their game. For Thames, none of that really happened. I have one theory that would make the most sense. If you look at Thames in 2017, he dominated in the month of April as he had an OPS of 1,272, but in the very next month, it dropped to 722. The only possible theory that would make sense is that pitchers figured out Thames' strategy. Pitchers learned how to face him and that led to Thames' downfall. According to Fantasy Pros, they made a table showing Thames' plate discipline metrics. They used stats like reach rate, swing strike rate, and walk rate. In April, all three of these stats were at a proper spot. His chase rate was good, his swing strike rate was low, and the walk rate was sufficient for a good hitter. But the very next month, it was worse. His chase rate climbed by 10%, which meant pitchers were less scared of throwing strikes to him, his swing strike rate increased, and his walk rate decreased. The only explanation that would make sense is that the league read his game. That changed his performance, allowing him to not be the same player. He could have been one of the best hitters in the league for years, but unfortunately, it did not end up like that. Nevertheless, he still had a great career, and his story is definitely interesting to read and hear about. Now that he retired, he has options on whether he wants to stay in baseball, maybe be a coach or a sportscaster, or do something out of the sport. We will see what his next step in life will be. And that is going to be it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, please consider to leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. I'm out.